Hello, I'm Jasmine. This story is called Queen Victoria's Underpants by Jackie French and Bruce Watley. It's a story about knickers. My friend Sam's uncle used his secret weapon in the fight against Napoleon. I think his secret weapon is a pie in the face. My friend William's grandpa helped Captain Cook find Australia. My friend Bridget's father drove the first steam train in England. Look, the steam is covering his head. But my mum made Queen Victoria's underpants. Queen Victoria was empress of half the world. She owned palaces and huge armies. Mighty sultans gave her precious jewels. But she didn't have any underpants. Most people in those days didn't wear any underpants at all. The Queen wants my underpants, shrieked Mum, when a footman from the palace brought the message. Oh my goodness, cried Gran. Not Mum's underpants, Gran, I said. The ones she makes. My mum made the best underpants in the world. Gran sniffed. <laughs> I don't approve of underpants. If a girl wears proper petticoats and takes ladylike steps, she doesn't need underpants. What if the wind blows the Queen's skirt up? demanded my brother Bertie. What if the Queen goes roller skating? I asked. Gran glared at me. Her Majesty never goes roller skating, she said. Maybe that's because she doesn't have underpants, I pointed out. My mum looked worried. What kind of underpants would the Queen like? Tartan, cried Bertie. The Queen loves tartan and bagpipes. They could be bagpipe underpants, so they play music when she sits down. They should be balloon underpants, I declared, so she can fly across her empire. They're being a bit silly, aren't they? Well, they should certainly be well padded and comfortable, stated Gran, who was starting to become interested. It's so difficult, cried Mum. Silk or linen, lace or frills, long, short or knee length, and what colour? Who knows what Her Majesty would like? Don't worry, Mum, I said. We'll all help. Dad and Bertie found the finest linen, which came from Ireland. Linen is tough, but it's soft too, Dad told us. We can't give the Queen underpants that could split or make her itch. Gran and I visited the lace makers. I need the best lace in England, ordered Gran, as the lace makers twirled their bobbins. It's for underpants, for Her Majesty. Bertie and I had our own ideas. I think the Queen's underpants should have a secret pocket, said Bertie, to hold cake if she gets hungry or to keep bones in for her dogs. Mum looked doubtful. I'd hate Her Majesty to get ants in her pants, she said. Well, I think she needs a built-in warming pan, interrupted Gran. That palace looks cold and draughty to me. I think her pants pockets should have bows and arrows, I said, 
so she can shoot anyone who tries to assassinate her. Dad smiled. They'd be awfully prickly when she sat down. But Mum had already begun to cut out the underpants. She cut out one pair, then another, and another, and another, until we had 52 pairs of underpants. We all helped Mum to sew and then Gran embroidered them with numbers so that the Queen wouldn't get them mixed up. I embroidered a crown and the Queen's initials on every pair so that no one could ever wear Her Majesty's underpants by mistake. When Queen Victoria was due to open Parliament that year, we all had new underwear too. Even Gran wore underpants for the occasion. But we couldn't help feeling it was a shame no one would see any underpants. Maybe a tiger will escape from the zoo and tear off the Queen's skirt, I cried. Or maybe she will fall over, suggested Bertie hopefully, so everyone will see her new underpants. But then the Queen appeared at the front of a long procession. She wore satin and diamonds and rubies and lace. She also wore my mum's underpants and a secret smile. It was the smile of a woman who knows that no matter what, no one will ever see anything they shouldn't. There's the Queen's underpants. What a funny book. The end.